Rust is a popular language, quickly overtaking C because of its type safety, memory safety, and concurrency safety. One of the safest language, in addition to being able to have the performance speed of C, it's becoming the popular language. And guess what? You can use it for web development as well. A lot in the server side, you would think, is where it shines. And it does. It's true. It shines well for creating server APIs. It can go even further into web APIs. So we take a look. We can see that we're going to look at some of the top Rust web frameworks for 2024. Taking a look here, <clears throat> I can even tell you that we've got Axum, Pingora, Actix, U, and Tari. Uh, so between these five, uh, I can tell you that these top three are going to be web fo uh, web server API focused. So you'll be focusing on building web server APIs using these three frameworks: Axum, uh, Pingora from Cloudflare, and Actix. These are web servers. Uh, and then if you look at the other two, these are more frameworks that really focus on the front end, right? So U is going to be fantastic for building front end web apps with WebAssembly. So kind of how you're familiar with React and uh, other kinds of React, like Vue.js, those types of frameworks. If you're familiar with those, you'll be familiar with U. And it's all built into a WASM package that gets delivered to the web browser and then is rendered through. So it's going to be a lot faster. And the, uh, overall, it's going to provide a better user experience. Tauri is sort of like Electron, but way faster because it, it removes a lot of that boilerplate that you have to include with Chromium. And it focuses just on, I believe, WebKit only. So you're going to have a faster user experience. These are built for desktop apps, right? So you can use web-like technologies, but then leverage Tauri to render and deploy and build a binary that contains your app into a desktop application. Axum is a Rust web server framework specifically focused on server-side API development. And the idea is making it easy for an application developer to build web applications in terms of the server-side perspective, right? So there's no front end with Axum. It's just going to be providing API interfaces that makes it really super easy to build. Uh, and it's also fast, efficient, and easy to just work with in general for all the sorts of cases. So I swear I say this is one of the uh, frameworks that we use at PubNub is Axum. We like it because it's easy to use and it's really focusing on developer experience. So they make it really simple and straightforward to integrate with uh, seamlessly on the Tokyo side as well. So there's a lot of Tokyo, which is the asynchronous runtime, uh, a lot of uh, Tokyo modules that are easily included in Axum, such as like a universal logger that runs across all of your API endpoints and routes, which is really powerful. So there, it gives you a lot of capabilities there. Um, and then it has uh, good, I mean, obviously, it leverages the type safety of the language. You don't really have a choice there unless you use unsafe, which you obviously don't want to do. The, the drawback is it is newer compared to the other web server frameworks that exist, uh, though that's actually a benefit, in my opinion, because they've really taken uh, all the capabilities, for the most part, from the other options that are available on the market and have just made it simpler to use and consume from a developer perspective. Uh, and since it is newer, it does have a smaller community compared to ActX, right? Uh, it's a good match for developers who are starting a new project, I would say. We chose uh, Axum because it is much easier to use, it's more straightforward, uh, and you know, it really bounces on top of Tokyo and Hyper, which are already really powerful frameworks that exist for web development on the server, HP server and HP client. So it is already stable from that perspective. Um, any, it's, it might not be so great for projects that are like requiring absolute top number one biggest community, right? So Actix is going to be number one choice there if it, the project requires the ultimate like guarantee that you're going to have someone who's more familiar with language. Like the, the community pool is bigger, um, and it's not really great for uh, quick prototyping. Uh, so it, um, although I would say. Uh, Axum probably is a little bit better from that perspective uh, because it, they do keep, keep it simple. But really, if you're looking for quick prototyping, you probably don't want to be using Rust anyway. Uh, the good news is that it's fully open source and it's free, and uh, it is really straightforward and easy to use. Pingora is a powerful Cloudflare-based open source project that they kind of use to replace Nginx. Like the idea was Nginx is really powerful. It's written in C and it has high performance and it has been used in the industry I don't know, for decades, right? 
And even uh, at Cloudflare, they use Nginx. Even at PubNub, we use Nginx. And Pingora, sort of like the answer to sort of cover all the edge cases that Nginx didn't take care of in terms of automatic uh, uh, service discovery and its ability to integrate with routes and just be have a high stability that you get with Rust. Because, uh, you know, Nginx, of course, is written in C, and so it has a higher cost for maintenance. Whereas with Rust, you don't have that so much. You don't have that problem because Rust really has that ruthless refactoring capability. The compiler is really going to help you protect against any of those problems that you would normally have by developing Nginx-like systems. So the best capability, we use Pingora at PubNub. We, we, we like this, uh, this server technology. And it's high performance. It's really designed to work at a high scale, which Cloudflare, you know, is a very large CDN provider. They are gonna make sure that it is extremely performant, uh, scalable, and low latency. These are the main benefits, which are very attractive. When it comes to ease of use, uh, it's still fairly new, uh, at, at least in terms of its release, right? It's been used and is in use by Cloudflare, so they know how to operate it and uh, grow it and extend it. Uh, though it is still merging from a community-based perspective. It's a great match for applications that need high performance, right? And so at PubNub, we're, we're connecting a billion devices. We need to make sure that we can service those devices quickly, easily, and seamlessly. They, they have to connect, and you know, if there are problems, then we know that we can easily route around those problems using Pingora. It's a bad match for basically anything where it's you know prototyping. It's not going to be quick for prototyping. There's a little bit more to it. Uh, and it is not the most community supported project out there because it's still pretty new, at least in terms of its open source. So it is a very permissive license, it's open source, it's free, um, and it is really good at the high performance part of it. So if you want speed, Pingora is your answer. Actix is a Rust web server framework that is the most mature, I would say, overall in terms of its ability to be a web API framework. It's specifically built on an actor system for concurrency. It's just the model that they chose in order to interact with asynchronous. Actix is pretty old when it comes to that perspective, so it came out before a lot of the standard asynchronous uh, built-ins from the Rust uh, ecosystem. So it has you know, some baggage from that perspective. However, it is still pretty performant being that Rust is a performant language. It's mature and the, most, uh, the largest community. So if you're looking for the most mature, the, uh, the most well-established web framework from an API perspective, Actex is your choice. We actually migrated away from Actex uh, due to it does require extra effort and it's a little bit older, it does have a little extra baggage. We like Pingora and Axum. These are better for us in terms of developer happiness uh, because they're easier to use, um, but they also focus on higher performance. Uh, the great news about Actix here is it has a lot more built-ins out of the box, which uh, come included in the framework. So you're going to get basically everything you need from an API perspective will be covered here from the ActX. Uh, it is more complex and it has a higher learning curve. Uh, this is the reason why we migrated to Axum because we like simplicity. Maintenance is the number one cost of an application throughout its lifetime. You can build up a project really quick, you know, and it could only take a few months at most, but then the lifetime, it lasts forever, right? It could last for years, half a decade, a whole decade. They can last a long time, and so that's where you know 90 plus percent of the time of maintenance uh, complexity has a significant uh, detraction from that. So it's a good match if you're looking for generally um, rapid concurrency. I mean, it's okay at performance. Um, it is on the older side, so they have had a chance to optimize it. The newer server frameworks like Pingora and uh, Axum are going to be better there from that perspective. Uh, it is a good match for, it has all the features <laughs> that you would ever need in an API because it's been around for so long. So it's a bad match if you want a simple project and any developers that are new to Rust uh, would want to stay away from it because there's just extra uh, complexity. Uh, MIT license is my favorite license, means it's like fully open source and you can do whatever you want with it. That's, that's the best possible license that you can have. So that's really great. U spelled Y-E-W is a modern framework for building front-end applications using WebAssembly and Rust. And it's actually really cool. There are few options available in terms of being able to build WebAssembly applications. And U is probably my 
favorite when it comes to considering what framework would you want to pick if you're building a WebAssembly front end. From a performance perspective, obviously you're going to get a real excellent performance using native browser performance. And it's just going to be really fast. You compare it to, all right, so if you're familiar with React and uh, Vue.js, right, that pattern where you have HTML defined and then you have some interactions and functions and it's all sort of all self-contained. Well, this is the same thing. It's that same pattern, uh, except it gets compiled into a binary that is going to give you a ton of type safety, memory safety, concurrency safety. It's going to give you all the benefits all in a nice compact binary that is not going to be JavaScript. Guess what? It's going to be all in WebAssembly. So you're going to get extreme performance that you just can't even come close to when you look at these other frameworks like uh, Vue.js and React.js. Uh, at the drawback obviously is you know react has been out for a long time and this U is a newer framework that just doesn't have all the bells and whistles that you'd get with react uh, though if you are looking for a nice performant front end with a whole bunch of built-in safety and code reusability right so you could reuse that code from rust functions that you could also use on your server side you can also import those to the client side so it's an excellent match for code sharing between the systems. So that's kind of nice. Also, if you want to keep everything as much as possible in the Rust ecosystem, if you want to build all of your application end to end, your front end and your back end all in Rust, and you want to have just Rust everywhere, U is a really good framework for this. It's actually kind of, that's like the whole point, right? So it's a good match. If you want uh, to use Rust for your front end development, that's a really good match. Um, and then projects that require extreme performance and then all the Rust safeties uh, that are built in, it's gonna be a really good use case. So here's the problem though, most teams, everyone already has invested in JavaScript, right? In your React and your Vue.js, everyone pretty much already knows those things. So you're gonna have developers who know those things. The cool part is it's a pretty seamless transition between them because the concepts are nearly identical. So it's really straightforward from that perspective. Uh, I would actually say it's okay from that, considering that. Um, and it is a little more complex, uh, and it does require extra steps. So uh, you'll have to you know, build every time and deploy the, uh, the WASM uh, binary and then re-import and reload. So the tooling is a little bit more involved. So the development cycle is a little bit more. But the good part is you have all the built-in type safety, concurrency safety, and memory safety. So it's probably a good trade-off from that perspective. It is under the MIT and Apache 2.0 license. I don't, the dual licensing is weird. You just get to pick one. Like, which one do you pick? Do you pick MIT or Apache? Or do they both apply at the same time? It's hard to say, but both of them are there available. MIT is the best. Apache 2.0 is the second best. Uh, and so these are the licenses that you like to see. Towery, a uh, Rust web framework, actually spelled T-A-U-R-I, is a really cool web framework for building desktop applications. You're familiar with Electron, which allows you to use web technologies to then build a binary that can be installed onto desktops like your Mac and your Windows and your Linux environments to have a universal application that's easy to deploy across all platforms and we have one code base. It's really cool. The challenge is though, Electron comes uh, with Chromium and a whole bunch of boilerplate that is quite expensive and can be slow and requires extra file size, uh, longer load times. Tari focuses specifically on WebKit, I believe, and it doesn't include a whole bunch of extra bloat that you get with Chromium, uh, the open source web browser project, and it has just a smaller footprint overall, right? So it's one of the best things. The second tenant that they really care about is security and privacy, so they've spent a lot of extra effort to ensure that all the, the community and the channels and communication uh, and the way that binaries are created are secure. Right, so a lot of built-in extra focus on security, uh, and that's that's a huge aspect towards the benefit of Towery. Uh, the drawback, obviously, it's still pretty new, right? It's pretty new when you compare it to Electron. So, but you really, what is what is what do you need, right? You just need to draw, render an interface using HTML and CSS, and then you need to be able to you know, the user needs to be able to interact with it, right? And you need to be able to capture events. And it's really the same either way. So you're really only getting the major benefits and the drawbacks is, yeah, sure, it's still pretty new, 
though it's you know in Rust and you get WebKit, and these things are well established and have been on the shelf for a long time. Uh, from that perspective, it's pretty mature already as the foundation. Um, there is a learning curve. You do have to do extra efforts, uh, though they hold your hand and make it really easy. Simple few um, command line calls, and then you have a full built application. So it's great for desktop applications that need better performance and a security focus. Uh, so if you're building enterprise apps and you want to deploy them on desktop. So it's actually a really good match, I would say, for deploying desktop applications. Um, and if you're familiar with Rust already, then it's a good match. It's not a bad, it's, it's a bad match overall if you're already focusing on web applications um, and you already have Electron, there will be a porting consideration that you'd have to do. Uh, it, there, there is a migration. Uh, if you're starting a new project, uh, it's probably great and you want to focus on desktop development. Tari uh, uh, is a really good option, right? That's one of the best options for con making consideration for that perspective. And it is free. It's totally free. MIT and Apache 2.0, which are the two best, most permissive open source licenses that are available on the web.